We only have a couple clubbers here, so I'm going to look to our two clubbers. So 
Lillian Promise, do either of you remember what this week's theme night is? No? Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Let's see, do any of our leaders remember what this week's theme is? It is not Red Night. That is going to be one of our nights. It is Outer Space Night. No rocket ships, you know, please. But you, know, you can dress up. Wear, like, if you've got a solar system shirt or anything, please wear that. We'll just dress up, have some fun. You could even wrap yourself up in aluminum foil. That would work. So to just go over a quick calendar of events. So this week, our Wednesday is Outer Space Night for Awana. Next Sunday, we are doing potluck after church. We're also going to be doing our annual church meeting at that time. Uh, oh, okay, we got moved off. Okay. All right, so there is, out in the entryway, though, there is a sheet with the proposed budget. So please grab one. Also on the check-in table out there, there is a card for the Nuri family, for Patrick and Vicki. So we'll leave that out for a couple weeks just so everybody can sign it, and then it will get delivered to them just as a thank you for all that they've done for us during this time. And then on the 14th, we'll have communion. Dr. Tom Hoyle is going to be with us. All right. That's something I know I always look forward to. I know a number of people do, too. And then we'll have our annual meeting. Is that correct? Okay. Uh, <laughs> yes, it'll be a short one. And then, as I've mentioned a few times, so we are not passing around an offering plate just due to all the things that are going on still. So there is offering plates in the entryway when you come in. Please feel free to drop off your offering there. You can also mail in a check if you'd like, or you could use the Tithely app. It's a very convenient, easy way to uh, process that, and that money all comes to us. And now I'm going to hand it over to the worship team for singing. Please stand and join us. All right, our first hymn for the morning will be 527, Glory to His Name. Down at the cross where my Savior died, down there for cleansing from sin I cried. There to my heart was the blood applied, glory to His name.
and our second song is going to be the chorus revelation song. Thank you, worship team, a.k.a. the Johnston family. We appreciate you leading us in singing. And now is the time in our service where we'll go ahead and worship with prayer.
Dear Heavenly Father, thank you so much for all that you have blessed us with. Thank you that uh, Mike Rowan's surgery went well. Uh, pray for his recovery to go well. And uh, look forward to seeing him hopefully soon. Thank you for Hayden, uh, for his numbers dropping uh, by a fairly significant margin. We pray for continued blessings on that, that the numbers will continue to trend down. Thank you that uh, Hayden's been doing great during all of this time. And thank you so much for all that you've done for him and for our family. Lord, thank you that we have the ability to come here, to gather together, worship you freely. Uh, we know that that's something that many other people are not able to do. Lord, thank you that we are continue to do Awana. Thank you for all our clubbers that come, for all our helpers and leaders that are here, for everybody's flexibility as we've had to adjust a few things, but uh, thank you that we've been continuing doing that. And may we continue to be a beacon on this hill for you. May we go out from this place to be people who resonate confidence in knowing you, especially during all this time of uncertainty, that people might see that and want to get to know about you through us. We ask all of this in the name of your son, Jesus Christ. Amen. And now is time for our children's lesson. I don't have uh, science, I don't have uh, um, fire, and um, so I just have a story. Um, I don't expect you to recognize this uh, famous musician, but it's Johann Sebastian Bach. Uh, he was... Um, I have, hooray, um, he was famous for being messy. Uh, his, um, uh, signature was better than mine, but his writing was messy. Um, in original, um, he was messy, messy, messy. But he's famous for, I'll try this again. Hooray. S D G. Uh, there's um, not his initials, but you can tell if he can uh, compose music. Hall was right. S D G. Uh, at the conclusion. It's Latin, solo Deo, uh, Dea Gloria, to God be the glory, SDG. Yeah. He was um, um, uh, either secular or sacred, um, composing music for the glory of God. He is, um, style of writing was um, unique because um, people who play the organ um, said um, they have to stretch to play all the music. Um, it, it was intentional. He tried to cover the gamut of musical composition um, in an effort to glorify God. All the music he wrote is designed to glorify God. Uh, Ephesians 5, 19 and 20, speaking to another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing and making melody with your heart to the Lord, always giving thanks for all things in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ to God, even the Father. Join me in reading Mark 14, 72. Immediately a rooster crowed a second time. 
And Peter remembered how Jesus had made the remark to him, Before a rooster crows twice, you will deny me three times. And he began to weep. You may be seated. The title of this message is Thinking About It. Thinking About It. Years ago, uh, a world traveler traveled to Ecuador and uh, spent a couple of weeks traveling in the mountains. He met people who were were natives, and um, they conducted their lives, uh, they did their business, but they lived their lives among mind-numbing squalor. Uh, The disease and disfigured bodies as a result of that were heartbreaking. The bugs and stench were everywhere. People lived in a hole in the ground, calling it a house. They were feeding on wasted food and prizing uh, broken things as possessions. But they didn't know it. Why? Everyone lived that way. Everyone they knew lived that way. They had never been given a picture of life, um, what it means to be a genuinely healthy human being. They did not know what abundant life truly looks like. That's our problem too. The reason we think of ourselves as largely innocent people, people who have little to do with bringing about the cross of Christ, is misinformation. We don't get how sick and underdeveloped we are spiritually. In Psalm 14, David says that the only one fully healthy being in the universe was Jesus Christ. The Lord looks down from heaven on the sons of men to see if there are any who understand, any who seek God. But they have all turned aside. They have all together become corrupt. There is no one who does good. No, even uh, not one. Um, This found in uh, Psalm 14 as well as Romans 1. In other words, we are condemned and don't even realize it. The death of Jesus, we continue to tell the story, um, will extend it to the trials of Jesus. What was done to Jesus brings different people to the forefront. Judas Iscariot, the arresting group, Peter, and of course, Jesus and the disciples. Uh, We hesitate to guess, but uh, I'll make a guess. There's a young man who is featured and assuming um, the story, I believe there's a reasonable amount of guessing that's very likely our author, John Mark. Uh, The Last Supper traditionally took place in his family's home. John Mark followed along with the group of disciples. He wasn't in the dinner, but heard them leave, would have heard them leave and uh, go to Gethsemane. 
Possibly Judas came looking. Mark followed. The disciple left. Mark remained nearby. When grasped, he was held um, with uh, minimal clothing uh, as you would wear uh, at night clothes. When grasped, he left the cover he'd thrown on and escaped back home. Jesus went two different trials, each with three parts. Two trials, three parts. Ecclesiastical, uh, a.k.a. the Jewish part of the trial. Preliminary uh, was before An uh, Annas. The Sanhedrin and chief priests uh, pick up at 1453. And a formal retrial before daybreak where he um, was technically condemned. There was a civil trial because Jews did not have the right, the authority to kill. Taking a life was in the hands of the Romans. Um, preliminarily, he uh, marched before Pilate. But Pilate sent him to Herod, where he was technically condemned to death. Pilate's trial resumes, and behold the man, a famous picture, but um, he was traded for Barabbas. The main characters of this trial, Caiaphas, the high priest from about 18 to 36 AD. Uh, he was the son-in-law of Annas. Annas really had the power. Uh, we believe he uh, was the high priest from 7 to 15 AD, but he was the power behind the throne. He was influential, and he really wanted Jesus to die more than uh, Caiaphas, but um, he got his way. Manipulated so that five of his sons and his son-in-law attained the rank of high priest. He was influential. This is actually the scene of the courtyard where Jesus was condemned. The goal of this trial, the goal of this trial was obtain evidence to have Jesus killed. Uh, he filled in the blanks because they couldn't get people to lie believably consistently. Uh, their witnesses would contradict themselves uh, and speak unclearly, but um, Jesus took care of them for us. Uh, the closest comment from Jesus to twist from um, John 2.19, I'll get to that, um, Jesus, um, Caiaphas now stood to try and save the situation. Caiaphas now stepped forward between the semicircles of um, judges, um, the Sanhedrin were the judges, and Jesus. He's seeing if he can incite Jesus to talking, into providing incriminating testimony because they couldn't get their witnesses to agree, and it would have been insufficient to crucify Jesus. First, Jesus fulfills prophecy. Isaiah 53, 7, as a lamb, he was silent. 
He says nothing. Then, Jesus knew it it was his Father's will to be condemned for humanity, to give his life for us. I am uh, the Son of God. Um, He used terminology that was associated with God. Uh, The I am identified himself as co-equal to the Father. And you will see the Son of Man, notice, sitting at the right hand of the power, coming with the clouds of heaven. Um, Sitting at the right hand um, was the position of honor and equality. He said that he was co-equal with God and had the power of God and would come the clouds of heaven. Just as Daniel described him in 713. They now have all they need to convict him. Uh, 14, uh, 63 and 64, um, he said with his own mouth, um, they termed it blasphemy, uh, we would term it uh, honor. Peter comes under scrutiny. Let no one say Peter lacked in courage. He come to Jesus in the water. He boldly said, you are the Christ. The spokesman, you are the Christ. Um, He was bold and brave. He struck out for Jesus in the garden with the sword. Uh, Jesus had to heal Malchus, but um, Peter was um, eager and brave and would defend Jesus. But when he looked away from Jesus, he was no longer courageous. No longer would he take steps to be brave. Peter denies he knows Jesus. First, while warming himself in the courtyard, because uh, it was gold, um, when a girl identifies him. Second, while he's probably trying to escape to the outside, and the girl follows and keeps talking to him. Third, an hour later, others recognize him and somehow he curses or takes the name of the Lord in vain. John 18, 26 says it was a relative of Malchus who identified him specifically. Then, as soon as he said something inappropriate, to deny Jesus, the rooster crowed. Jesus had said the uh, loudest and most proud of his followers would both forsake and deny him by this time, daybreak. The sun was rising. Peter remembered what Jesus said to him and how he was sure that he was too strong to fail. He was willing to die with Jesus. Luke 22:61 provides a dramatic moment. And the Lord turned and looked square at Peter. His eyes met Jesus' eyes. Peter then thought, 
reflected on what just happened, and he fell. Ken cried for a long time. Um, the Bible doesn't say how long, but um, I think that he cried until Jesus was taken away. How guilty he must have felt to say bad things, blaspheme about Jesus, and Jesus looked at him. He drops out of the picture until after the crucifixion. Uh, he's not mentioned. For us, all of our hearts, all of our hearts are deceitful. We think we're better than we are. People who claim to be Jesus' personal friends, when they wanted something, fled or denied him. We remember, Christ suffered for you, but God demonstrates his own love toward us in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us, for me. If anyone but me, um, especially, um, if it was Jesus and me, I would have still sinned. And even if it was just me, Christ would have had to suffer and die for me to uh, make atonement. It was personal and was emotional. But Christ still watches over us when we fail him. Pure grace. He looked at Peter the very moment that he failed. God loves and restores us when we repent. That is, confess our sins and work to grow. Um, I uh, love this quote. Hope raises no dust. Paul Iliard. Uh, a man says, uh, someone gave him a little cross around, uh, adorned with roses. It bears the inscription, hope raises no dust. He says, he looked at the phrase and didn't want to look stupid, but couldn't make sense of the quote, hope raises no dust. Um, he typed, um, hope raises no dust into uh, Google search engines and um, found the quote by uh, Paul Eluard, a French poet associated with nonsense thinking, uh, Dadaism. When he looked up Dadaism, he found this definition, uh, quote, the Dada movement tried to express the negation of all current aesthetic and social values and frequently used deliberately incomprehensible artistic and literary methods. Uh, in other words, life is absurd. Uh, life makes no sense. Then he saw uh, Eluard's other famous quotes. W uh, quote, elephants are contagious. The earth is blue like an orange. Um, they makes no sense. Yes. All of this brought me back to hope 
raises no dust. Everyone believes hope is vital to people, but most folks' hopes is about as vague as the quote that is painted on that little cross. But for Christians, hope is not vague. We have a hope that is historical and personal. Jesus died for us. We know a hope that stands in front of the empty grave of Jesus and clearly preaches, you too can live as Jesus lived. All right, please stand up for the final hymn, 116, Take the Name of Jesus with You. Take the name of Jesus with you, child of sorrow and the book. It will joy and comfort give you. Help us not to trust in our own strength and understanding, but to look towards your Son. Thank you for his sacrifice so that we may be redeemed. And uh, help us, Lord, to not rely on ourselves, but to rely on you. Thank you that we have that hope and that peace. May we bless others as you have blessed us this week. We ask this in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ. Amen. So please sign the card for the Nuries on your way out, and we hope you all have a great week.